Okay, so I have the list of all the instructions written down in this assignment, Texture Practice for Quad. And I am going to show you exactly what to do on this practice piece. Okay, so I have my folder open and I have the file downloaded, the texture practice from the assignment, right? So first put it on your desktop and then drag it into your CG1 folder because that way when you open it in Photopea, it will be linked to uh, your folder, okay? So you have to do that first. So anybody that's been having trouble, first open your photo P file, save it as a PSD to your desktop on your computer and then drag it in here. And then after that, you can always go back and forth once it's in your folder, but you can't just do it from your desktop. So now that I have it here, I can click on it and it'll open. And I should have open with PhotoP. Remember, if you didn't link it, you can connect an app and you can put PhotoP on there. So then you can open it. And sometimes things don't always open right away and you have to do it once or twice, but it's still linking it right from your file. Like right now, see, it didn't do it. So you just close it and try again. Sometimes I've had to try as many as three times. Usually when it says loading, then it's working. Okay, so now it's there. So now you can see it. All right, so the first thing is save it to your computer, upload it to your drive, open the file in photo P from your CG1 folder. And then now we're gonna go find a texture on a Google search. So I did that already. So here's my texture. I searched for leopard print background. So if you add the word background to your search, if you wanna do something like grass or um, you wanna do, uh, flowers, a field of flowers, or some leaves, or animal prints, or anything that you can think of, bricks, rocks, gravel, french fries. Um, you can search for anything, but if you put background, then it'll give you a good, it should find some seamless files that will, will work really nice. So I found a leopard print, and I want, and it'll show up over here if I click on the one that I like, and then just right click and open image in new tab, All right? So see, it put it up here in a new tab. And now I have just the image in the tab and I can drag it onto my file. So I just take it and I drag it right onto my photo P file. And it should make a new layer. If it doesn't work, sometimes some files are not actually JPEGs and, or a PNG and you have to go and find a different file. If it doesn't work, find something else. Okay, so now I have my leopard print and I see that little square right there. If you have that little square, you aren't gonna be able to edit it. So you have to rasterize it. So see, that's the next um, right click, the new layer and rasterize. So see how it made a new layer and it named it whatever it was called. It was called Seamless Pattern of Leopard. So it names it whatever they named it. And then you should have just the background and the texture. Of course, on our quads, you're gonna also have my choice and color theory on there. One really important thing to make sure is that you've dragged the texture layer to the very top, because every time you add a new, um, a new texture, it's going to put it above whatever layer you have selected. So if you have texture selected, then it's gonna automatically put it right above it. And it's easier to deal with if you keep texture at the top. All right, so now I wanna decide which quadrant I wanna fill. So I can just move that around using the move tool. Now this is not a very big file, so it fits perfectly. But sometimes you might want to change the size and you have to hold the shift key on here. On Photoshop, they've changed it so you don't have to hold the shift key. But if you wanna keep it constrained to the right proportion rather than getting all stretched all funny, press the shift key when you stretch it to resize it. So if you wanna see where it's gonna go exactly, you're gonna have a lot more details on your actual quad. Whoops, I forgot to rasterize. Let's rasterize, rasterize. Okay, so make sure you rasterize and that little square thing is gone. If not, it's not gonna let you 
do anything like get rid of any of the excess. All right, so if I wanna see what's below it so I can see exactly where to put it, over here on your layers, you have opacity. If you just click on the little triangle and you slide it over a little, look at that. You can see through it now, and then you can decide where you wanna put it, right? So I'm gonna just put it over top of this quadrant, this quarter, and I'm gonna make sure that I always slide the opacity back because I don't want it to be all, all light like that. Because if you don't, then it'll permanently keep it that way when you move it down and you'll see that part. All right, so now I have my layer over the place I want and I need to select it. So I'm gonna hide, see how it, this is the one that's selected right now? I'm gonna hide that layer and I'm gonna click on the texture layer because I can't, if I select on this layer, it's gonna select the little pieces of the, um, I wanna make this bigger now, we don't need to look at that other stuff. Um, it's going to select the little pieces instead. So if I try to use the magic wand tool, um, then I am going to so end up selecting, like, see how it's selecting little bits of, of the image? So I have to click on texture layer, and then I don't have to hide it. It will actually select it, but it's harder to see. So if you un if you hide it, click on the texture layer and then select the area. See how it put the, puts the little dash line around that? That's the part that I wanna fill. So I use the magic wand tool, make sure that it's on magic wand. It's the third one, fourth one down, looks like this. Um, and I select that area. And then I unhide my leopard pattern. And then you have to go back. So there's a lot of back and forth. So you wanna make sure that you go back to that layer or you're gonna end up deleting something from the texture layer and you don't wanna do that. So we are gonna delete everything except for that middle part. And you probably can't really see it very well, but it's highlighted still. Um, and if I go back to the layer and I have that area selected, if I click delete now, it deletes the part I wanna keep. So I'm gonna undo that. And I'm gonna go up to the select up here along the top menus in um, the photo P menus, and I'm going to click select inverse. Okay. Um, you can also do command um, shift I, and that will also do it. When you're really doing a lot and you want to be faster, you can use the shortcuts. I like to use shortcuts once I learn them, but it's select inverse. And so see how now you can see that there's a dash line around the outside. What it's done now is it's selected everything except for the part that I wanna keep. So if I press my delete key now, it deletes everything, all right? And then I can just press Command D to deselect that selection. All right, now, when you're doing your quad, you're gonna have a lot of different textures and you don't wanna keep a gazillion different textures in, in a bunch of layers. We wanna just only keep our main four layers that we had. Always keep the background, and I'm gonna show you why in a minute. Keep the background, keep the texture, my choice, and color theory. Um, but all these other ones, we're gonna merge them down to the texture layer. So right now, if I turn off all of these, there's a layer by itself of this little quarter. But when I merge it down, it'll marry it to this texture layer, and there'll be forever one, unless you wanna change it. And I will show you what you have to do to to change it um, when we're done, when I'm done with this. Okay, so um, right click on the seamless pattern layer, the whatever that texture was, it's all gonna be different names and go down to the bottom here and click merge down. And now you just have, see the back, if I hide both layers, the texture layer, when I unhide it, it's all together now. So this is part of the texture. It's now a permanent part. Well, what if I don't like it and I wanna change it? Look at what happens when I select that area, right? Remember when I use the magic wand to select and it, see how it's just selecting parts of the texture? Well, if I wanna select this whole quarter, I can't select it on the texture layer. And that is the whole reason why I want you to keep a background blank layer that's still white. 
So if you click on the background layer, then you can click on it and it selects this quarter because there's nothing in it. So what happens when you use a selection tool? If you click on with the magic wand, it's gonna click on everything that's the same color, right? And if I'm clicking it on the texture layer, it's gonna click on whatever color I click. So if I click on, if I click on black, it's gonna click on, it's gonna click the black. If I click on the tan, it's gonna click it and select all the tan, right? Um, so I need to hide that and go to the background layer so I can select just this whole quadrant. And now I can go back to texture and I can delete this, which what it's doing now is it's gotten rid of it, right? See how it, you can see the checkerboard? That means that it's showing through. It's like completely cut it out. But now I can go in and paste and I can create something different. So I'm gonna deselect it. I'm gonna go back and use a different texture. So maybe I wanted, we'll just do, um, how about French fries? Some, some students have used food and it's kind of fun. So look at that, right? So I click on that wallpaper and then I right click on here, open image and new tab. And now I go to that tab and now I have my French fries. So I can drag the French fries over. And now if you, sometimes you can, it's, it's all the way to the edges, right? So I'm gonna just put that over top. Um, I can make it smaller if I want, whoops, um, make it smaller and just cover that part. Remember, you can use opacity if you need to see where you wanna put it, right? Change that and put it back. All right, so now I just hide that. Um, oops, gotta rasterize, right? So right click, rasterize. And then I'm gonna to go to this texture layer. I'm gonna select this area. I'm going to unhide it go back and select this layer, select inverse, hit the delete key on your keyboard, and now I've changed it. Okay, so what you're gonna do for this assignment is you are going to fill each one with a different image. So it's not all gonna be the same, French fries, leopard, grass, flowers, rocks, bricks, whatever you want. And when you're done, don't forget to merge down, when you're done, I should only see a background and a texture layer with four fills. And if you want to fill this background, you can do that too. Okay. And also I've written them all out in the assignment here. So you can review that if you want. You can open it and see how I have them right next to each other. So you can kind of follow along and remind yourself, or you can watch the video and go along as you watch the video.